Value stream mapping is an important tool for defining the current state of a manufacturing plant. It allows manufacturers to map the value flowing through their plant, understand their operations, and identify areas for improvement and restructuring. Without value stream mapping, it is nearly impossible for manufacturers to create real and lasting changes. In this video, we will discuss the current state value stream map. Before drawing your current state value stream map, here are some mapping tips from Learning to See by Mike Rother and John Shook. Always collect current state information while walking along the actual pathways of material and information flows yourself. Begin with a quick walk along the entire door-to-door -door value stream. Begin mapping at the shipping end and work upstream. Bring your stopwatch and do not rely on standard times or information that you do not personally obtain. Map the whole value stream yourself. Draw by hand using an A3 or 11 by 17 inch size paper. Use a pencil with eraser. Here is a sheet with basic VSM pictures and shapes. Feel free to pause the video until you are familiar with them. Before we begin our VSM current state LEGO lab example, let's go over some of the given information for the mass production run. Any information not given for the actual production run, such as forecasting information, is assumed for the sake of the VSM example. Step 1. Customer Demand The first step of drawing a current state map starts with the customer. In our example, we are given the yearly demand for Speedster and SUV type vehicles. We convert the yearly demand into a daily demand and write the information on our map in the top right hand corner. Step 2. Processes Map out the process boxes along the bottom of the map starting from the furthest downstream process and move upstream. In our example, we start at shipping and map out each of the 15 stations, but in a real plant only entire cells or rooms would be mapped out due to scope. A typical process box may include many types of relevant information, but should always include cycle time. Mapping out each process allows the mapper to find important information about specific processes. In our example, you see that Station 5 has a long changeover time. Station 13 appears to be a bottleneck based on cycle time, and Station 15 has an outrageous scrap or defect rate, likely occurring at final inspection. Step 3. Whip. Draw triangles, supermarkets, or other inventory shapes between each of the process boxes to represent whip. Count the whip between each process and record them in the triangles or shape. For our example, we included the whip in each station in the whip triangle. Step 4. Materials. Map out the current materials process. For the LEGO Lab, we assume that the supplier supplies materials every Monday and Wednesday to the LEGO Lab's material supermarket, which then distributes the material to all stations during the production run. Step 5. Materials and Information Flow Map out all of the materials and information flows. For the LEGO Lab, we used an MRP system to schedule weekly and daily production forecasts. 30, 60, and 90 day forecasts are also delivered to the supplier and input into the MRP system based on marketing forecasts. We also draw striped arrows between all stations to demonstrate push. Step 6. Lead time. Start by drawing the processing time and tack time shape like shown in the example. Then use the customer daily demand and available time per day to calculate the tack time. Beneath each processing box, write the box's processing time. Beneath each inventory triangle, write the whip multiplied by the tack time. Finally, sum the processing times to find the total processing time, and sum the inventory times to find the lead time for the system. The lead time is the most important metric to evaluate the value stream by and will be what drives improvement for your future state value stream map. Now, the current state value stream map is completed. For more information on value stream mapping, we highly recommend reading the Shingo Prize winning Learning to See by Mike Rother and John Shook.